Hello, good evening, and uh, welcome. Ash from London here, and uh, yeah, welcome to my 100th video here on YouTube. Um, for those of you that have uh, been watching my stuff from the start, thank you very much for um, being there, I guess. Um, I think I'll say in my last video, it might not be music related this time, and it isn't. I'm going to be talking about art, which is another one of my uh, passions, shall we say. And I've kind of tried to bring it in to the, um, the world of music in some way. There's a couple of ways I've done that. One of the ways is what I'm doing is here is I'm going to do my top 10 favourite exhibitions that I've been to over the years. Um, most, of them are, most, of them, most of them are fairly recent ones because they're fresh in my mind. I've, I've been going to art galleries since I was a kid, since I was at school actually. I used to go to a couple of school trips and, uh, and then later when I was at college we used to go to um, galleries all over, all over the UK and sometimes on the, in mainland Europe. And then um, ever since I've just been... Uh, going to exhibitions, art galleries all over the world. It's just been a real uh, real um, love of mine, just um, chasing on. I do tend to deal with, when I'm talking about exhibitions, I'm dealing about the, the touring exhibitions or the special exhibitions that are on. Not particularly any um, museums, permanent collections as such, but um, when there's like a special exhibition, the ones you usually have to pay for to get into, because most, ex most um, art galleries, uh, particularly in the UK, are free to get in, but when they have a special exhibition on, it's, um, you have to pay to get in basically and quite often I buy tickets in advance because they do tend to sell out um, it's, uh, getting, which is really good um, and the, the, the art world is just really really um, booming at the moment some great exhibitions out there some of them actually tour the world I've, I've seen some in two different locations sometimes which has been quite exciting and I do tend to look at it as going to a concert almost like you go to a concert the artist is the artist you know whether it's Van Gogh or whatever and uh, the the paintings on show, or the, the works of art on show, are almost like the set list, and that's the way I kind of look at them. Going to an exhibition is quite quite interesting. Um, obviously, <laughs> like um, concerts, um, there's always a favourite, and if it's not there, you could be disappointed. Um, like uh, I went to an exhibition, gosh, back in the nineties, it was actually at the at Buckingham Palace in London, and it was um, Leonardo da Vinci um, sketches from the Queen's private collection, which was very exciting because it was stuff that public didn't tend to see very often but the, of course there was nothing famous there and people were saying oh you know like uh, so it's all very well the, a lot of them were sketches of horses and things like that it was, it was very 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 interesting uh, particularly from my art background but uh, there was no encore with the, the Mona Lisa or anything like that <laughs> that was the kind of attitude people had there was none of his famous ones here but anyway, so um, yeah, I've got my top 10 here of um, favourite art exhibitions that I've been to over the years. And I'm also throwing in a little extra to also tie it in with music, uh, number 11 in my top 10, because um, I'm actually going to show you um, a bit of vinyl. And it says um, this by Jarvis Cocker, lead singer from uh, Pulp. Now, um, he, what he did, he was... Um, I've been to quite a lot of time in Paris over the last few years, and uh, Jarvis lives in lives in Paris. So I think he still does. I'm not quite sure. And he had this uh, little exhibition on. It, um, it was actually sponsored by Red Bull, and it was called the the Red Bull Art Space in um, Rue de Mel um, in Paris. Um, I'm not quite sure it's a permanent. It's only a very small place, like two two rooms, and that's about it really. Um, very very small kind of art, art space, and. Um, he had this little exhibition on called 20 Golden Greats. And what, what he did was, he was basically, the front and back of that, he did these imaginary records. Uh, they're all like uh, 45s, all, all framed. There was uh, 20 of them there, ten, I think 10 in each room. And he designed these uh, record labels, all painted on the, on the actual records. So he'd done 20 of them, you know, just imaginary records, mostly by him. Jarvis Cocker on RCA there, on the old classic label, and... Uh, on the, on the London label down there, but I just thought it was quite interesting. Thing. It was free to get into, and he did this a limited edition um, vinyl that was given away. There was a thousand of them. Um, I actually managed to get there quite early in the in the exhibition um, in, when, it's, uh, when it was on, and um, they were just giving these away. Um, well, obviously, to the first thousand people that saw it, and I managed to keep it. I haven't even opened it yet; <laughs> still still sealed. But uh, this contained the ambient music that was playing in the gallery when you were looking at the um, the artwork. So um, I thought that was quite interesting. A little bit of uh, 
I don't know, record history, should we say? An unusual item to have in my collection, and uh, yeah, one, one uh, I will probably open it one day and give it a spin. But uh, that's uh, that's my little um, number eleven in my top ten art gallery things to tie in with the music, I suppose. Anyway. Let's go on to the top ten proper. Now, there's a very, very different to showing albums because uh, what I've got here, I've got the catalogues from the exhibitions, and some of them are quite quite heavy things. So, um, bear with me if, I, if I'm struggling to hold them up. Okay, so number ten. Um, this was an exhibition I went to in 2000 in London, and it was at the uh, Royal Academy of Arts. Um, it's a lovely old building um, on Piccadilly, and um, it was called. Uh, 1900 Art at the Crossroads, and what it was was just a celebration of 20th century art because it was like the new millennium. New millennium was a, on the horizon. This was the uh, catalogue, and it's a huge piece of uh, literature, shall we say? But yeah, it was just really, really good, and it was um, celebrating the centenary of the Paris Exposition. Really, the um, the Paris Fair was um, was on in um, uh, 1900 that. Uh, at the time, it was the largest um, exhibition of contemporary art in, in history anywhere in the world at the time. And this is just kind of like an anniversary of that in many ways, with a few add-ons as well, because um, uh, artists like Picasso were up and coming back in, back in the day, and um, they just, just had you know, lots, of, um, lots of the top names of, of the 20th century. Picasso, uh, Cezanne, Monet, the, the, whole, the whole crew. It's absolutely uh, chocker with some great art. It's, Randomly open up a page here. There we go. So the kind of stuff that's in there. I think it was it separated into different things. I think it's separated into landscape, sit, uh, uh, still life portraits. Uh, landscape, some uh, interesting portraiture there. Portraits, uh, landscape, still life, social studies, fantasy, bits of sculpture. Oh, there's some sculptures there. But uh, yeah, it was just a really, really fascinating, um, fascinating exhibition to go to. I actually went there quite late in its run and um, managed to get this catalogue was on special because he had quite a few left. So I think I'd gone down in, gone down in price. Just my first one has a bit more, a bit more fair. Rural scenes is a particular chapter in here. But yeah, you got some Gauguin there, Paul Gauguin. But uh, yeah, it was just a really, really cool. Cool thing to see, it was a good anniversary. Um, as far as I can tell, most of these catalogues are still available for purchase through various, um, well, I think in the museums themselves, in the, in, the, in the stores in the museum, but also online as well. Um, so um, that's always a bear with him, but they're really, really worth um, investing in. This is uh, another one of my retirement plans, actually. I'm going to get all these art books, so I'll be listening to vinyl. Listen to all this stuff and uh, reading my art books when I retire. That's what I plan to do because I've kind of flicked through these but not really read them properly because they're quite huge things to read through. But anyway, there we go. That's um, Art at the Crossroads from uh, 2000 at the uh, Royal Academy of Arts. Okay, number nine, we moved to Paris. And um, my, my favourite Paris art gallery is the Musée d'Orsay, which used to be the um, Gare d'Orsay, the railway station. I think it was the Paris to Olion line, which has now been converted in the 80s. It was converted into this amazing uh, art space. And I was there in 2015 and um, came across, well, literally uh, thinking, oh, I'll just pop down to the Odds oh, 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 um, and see what's on. And um, it was a Pierre Bonnard exhibition was on. Now, um, this was interesting because I didn't know much about him at all. Um, I'd never studied him at uh, college. I knew the name, obviously. He was a French Impressionist, known for his uh, use of uh, real bold colour in his art. And uh, I thought, yeah, why not? Let's pop in and see this. And I was really, really impressed. It was just really, really nice to go around, see stuff I didn't really know anything about. Um, did a lot of um, a lot of portraits and nudes and stuff, the usual kind of stuff. I'm not just showing you the same, the same images on the front. That's a waste of time. Uh, there was a lot of his um, photography as well, which was quite interesting. Uh, lots of uh, interior designs and things. Um, uh, I also love the design of the, the catalogue as well, the use of the um, the letter in there. That's kind of like using the bold colours in the in the letters and the characters. And, but yeah, it was just really really nice. And um, being on at the uh, uh, sort of his photography as well. Photography I wasn't too fussed about. But it was quite interesting to see his uh, his approach to photography, which is very very similar to his approach to um, painting. Only it was in black and white. That was, that was the main difference. And none, none of the vibrant colours. 
like uh, and see all the other quite a lot of landscapes. But yeah, it was just, just really really nice. Like I say, didn't know much about him. I uh, became a bit of a fan of his stuff. He was very influenced by Paul Gauguin, who you saw in the other catalogue. But um, and this is definitely I've seen this um, for sale on online. This is still around. This is the catalogue. So um, go out and have a browse. So that's number nine. Um, Pierre Bonnard at uh, the uh, Musée d'Orsay in Paris, 2015 exhibition. Next up, back to London, and this was on at the Hayward Gallery. Uh, this was in 1994. This is a really heavy book. This was a celebration of German art, and it's called The Romantic Spirit in German Art, 1790 to 1990. So it's covering a huge, huge, um, not two centuries basically, um, huge chunk of work. So, but th this was a fascinating. I was just one of those things where I'd never even, ever thought about it, but I'll. Oh, Go and see it, and I went on there because I was living in London at the time. I used to go to the galleries all the time down there. I think a little bit spoilt for the galleries, and um, this was just brilliant. I mean, the, all the all the famous artists are in there. I was more interested in the in the more con uh, the later stuff, the more modern stuff like um, Paul Klee, Max Ernst, uh, Kandinsky, uh, Franz Marc. But it was just, just really fascinating the stuff that was in here. So you was trying to find some points of interest in here. There you got the Kandinsky stuff, which is a uh, Later, that's more the kind of thing I, I was there for. Uh, the stuff from the 18th century was uh, was pretty good as well, but uh, I'm more into modern art in general. Uh, let's find some stuff. What we got here? We've got some uh, Moritz von Schwind, which is uh, quite interesting stuff. That's quite dark, and uh, it also got, it goes through the um, obviously through the political pe period of um, of the history of uh, Germany. And goes through um, what was going on during the uh, the Third Reich, which is quite um, interesting, kind of stark stuff. Oh, a bit of mono. Otto D. It was a mono kind of modernism kind of stuff going on. A stern looking little girl there. Well, let's find this. The Third Reich stuff is really interesting. It's just uh, the way it was. Um... So I should have put a little. I should have put um, markers in this. Well, I'm always thinking of doing that. I never um, never get around to doing it. Where the devil is it? Romantic. Oh yeah, there's, there's um, what's that? Something here. Yeah, a Schinkel painting there. And I've got a feeling Schinkel painting in the Starry Hall there. I've got a feeling that has something to do with the Mozart uh, opera, um, the Magic Flute. But I could be wrong. It was just something I remember seeing at the time. Oh, there's a bit of Max Ernst. Max Ernst and uh, George Schultz. But um, yeah, I mean. Just, just great. Just the, trying, trying to cram two hundred years of uh, German art history into um, one exhibition. I thought it was quite a, quite a bold, bold thing to try and do. But I think they pulled it off. There's some quite interesting stuff. Lots of really cool stuff. Which I could, I could, I could show you all this stuff for ages. But um, anyway, uh, this, as far as I know, this is still available for purchase uh, in various places. Nineteen ninety four, Hayward Gallery, the Romantic Spirit in German Art. 1790 to 1990. Oh, it weighs a ton, that one. Okay, um, moving on to number seven in my window now. Um, moving to New Zealand, I, just, I didn't know a lot about any New Zealand artists, to be honest. Um, there's not a lot of New Zealand artists out on the international stage, as it were. Um, Dick Frizzell was the only guy I'd, I'd heard of. Well, and of course, coming here, it's a bit like discovering the New Zealand music scene, uh, discovering the art scene, and I now have a favourite New Zealand artist, and it's uh, Rita Angus, who I think was from Hastings in Hawke's Bay, which is on the North Island. But yeah, I was just, um, I didn't know anything about her, and I just, uh, it was at the Auckland Art Gallery, this was in um, 2009. And it was just a huge exhibition um, of her work, and it's it actually toured uh, New Zealand. It played uh, down in Wellington and a few other places down in Christchurch on the South Island. I saw her when it was up in Auckland. I think Auckland was its last last port of call, and I just absolutely loved it. She's got this really unique style. It's one of her self portraits. She's got a really unique style, and a really cool use of colour. Um, she does mainly portraits and um, landscapes. That's uh, some more portraits there. Lots of self-portraits, uh, but that was just really, really, really in interesting uh, style. I just really loved it. Try to find some of the landscapes. Lots of still life. Really interesting landscapes like this. This kind of 
this kind of thing. I just really, I just really loved it straight away, and it was just so nice to find to, you know, to find something. It was a bit like a bit like hearing a new band on the radio. Yeah, I found a new artist, and uh, uh, I've since seen quite a lot of her stuff in uh, various galleries around the country. I mean, she's got quite quite prolific. Uh, some of her self portraits. Very much of its era, some of the style of the clothing and everything, I suppose. In 1930s, 20s, 30s, um, well, 1930s and 40s, I think it was, was it? Hang on. Yeah, 39, 43, so. But, yeah, it was just really cool. Things like that, just really, 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 really nice. So, so there we go. That was um, Rita Angus at the Auckland Art Gallery in 2009. Mostly in oils and watercolours, but, um, yeah, it was really, really cool. That's uh, number seven in my art gallery exhibitions rankings. Okay, um, number six is a very interesting one. It's quite different to all the others. Um, uh, this, this was um, serviced in 2014 in London, again, uh, the uh, the British Library, of all places. And it's called Comics Unlimited. No, hang on. Comics Unlimited. I can't read. <laughs> Comics Unmasked, Art and Anarchy in the UK. And it's all about... Um, Cartoons, basically. Now I'll read the intro to it. In fact, I've got the T-shirt on here. You can see that's the uh, that's the character in the front there. I draw my uh, Jamie Hewlett, Jamie Hewlett from Gorillas. Uh, the the back showing the same thing. But uh, I'll, I'll read. Um, actually, yeah, the back the back message is actually better. Comics Unmasked. Comics Unmasked reveals mainstream and underground comics which address politics, heroes, gender, violence, sexuality, and altered states. Prepare for sensory overload. And that's exactly what it is. It has loads of really, really cool stuff in here. Um, uh, let's see, we've got... Um, we've just opened on a random page here. Friday Night at the Boozer. <laughs> you can forget all your um, kiddies' comics. There's nothing nothing about the Beano in here or anything like that. So uh, all those kind of things. But you see, it goes way back to... Um, the early uh, the Victorian um, things. This is a Victorian. That's quite a stark cartoon work there. Right up to the sort of superheroes. Um, let's try and find some of the old Victorian stuff. But here we are, some stuff like this. There's lots of political um, things going on. Lots of uh, lots of rather graphic sci-fi stuff. Let's find the superheroes in the end. I think there's a chapter. Oh, there we are, some uh, two, uh, 2000 AD magazine, and also Tank Girl as well, which was a Jamie Hewlett creation. Well, th this was a, a fascinating um, exhibition, just something really different. Uh, yeah, Wonder Woman. It's not the Wonder Woman I remember. <laughs> but, uh, and um, being an artist myself, and also I've, I've actually delved into a bit of cartoon work over the years. Uh, it, was, it was just uh, really, really fascinating to look into. You know, just uh, a, a day well spent. At that well, not a whole day, but uh, it was pr pretty good. So good, I got the t-shirts as well. So um, anyway, yeah. So that was two thousand. Um, so two thousand fourteen, comics unmasked, <laughs> um, art and anarchy in the UK. Uh, I was at the uh, British Library in London, and that is uh, number six in my uh, art exhibition run down here. Again, I think that I think that book, that catalogue is still uh, available. Okay, top five now. Number five. Okay, got a bit of Monet in here, I think. Now this was um, one of the touring fest uh, tour touring festivals, touring exhibitions. It's um, I can't remember where it started, but it, it came to Australia. Um, I'd just come back from Europe, and uh, quite a lot of the big exhibitions don't tend to get to New Zealand, so you have to go. And Australia is usually the nearest port of call to, to catch some of them. Uh, so I went to Sydney, and I was ready to see this. It's called Monet and the Impressionists. It was a really, really good um, selection of stuff by Monet and a few other, a few other Impressionists like Cezanne and Degas, Manet, uh, Pissarro, Renoir, people like that. But it's mostly Monet. He was the, the he was the headline. <laughs> he was the headline act that day. Uh, but it was just uh, typical. It was really great stuff. I mean, I love Monet. Um, studied him at college. Uh, it was a Paul Cezanne self portrait there. Yeah. Like and it was just just great to um, you know, see a lot of see a lot of some of the stuff I'd seen before, but it was just really really nice. Really, it was at the um, Gallery of New South Wales in Sydney. Um, just a just a, a lovely lovely little walk around. I mean, I've seen a lot of Monet, particularly in Paris, of course. Just um, there's a Renoir as well, Renoir and Monet. 
Renoir Monet double bill. Uh, yeah, just uh, fantastic stuff. I think there's a picture of him here somewhere. Where is he? There he is, the man himself. But uh, yeah, it was really good. Now the thing is, this was I went over to Sydney to see this. It was quite good because I got friends in, in, and family living in Sydney. Well, family at the time, and uh, so I spent a good, cool weekend there. This thing actually did come to New Zealand in the end. It, uh, after it left Sydney, it went down to Wellington. Uh, I didn't go again. It was uh, would have been made it quite an expensive uh, visit because I would have had to get a flight down there and maybe accommodation. But uh, I was just typical, you know. The, the one I actually made the effort to go to is one that actually comes to New Zealand as well. But yeah, it was worth it. It was good, good. Uh, Good trip to Sydney, good trip to see some uh, fantastic art, and um, uh, the rest of the gallery there um, in Sydney is really cool as well, there's a lot of really other, other good stuff there, but um, so that's number five in my uh, art exhibition rundown here, Monet and the Impressionist, from um, 2008 in Sydney, okay, back to the UK, uh, up to Liverpool, the Tate Liverpool. This was uh, number four in my own. This was um, 2008, same year. In fact, I'd seen this just before the Monet show. It's uh, Gustav Klimt. Painting, design and modern life. Now, this is definitely um, still available to buy. Uh, it's just got a slightly different um, front cover now. As he was looking at it the other day on this, che test checking the price from when I paid for it back in there. I paid £25 for it back in the day. I think it's actually a bit cheaper now. That's typical, isn't it? But this is just brilliant. I, mean, I love Klimt, the Austrian symbolist. I've, I've since been to um, Vienna to see some of his stuff there as well. And, um, and the Leopold Gallery in, uh, in Vienna, which is, uh, was really good. But this was just incredible. Was really, I think it's probably the best um, exhibition. I've been, I've been to quite a few exhibitions at the Tate in Liverpool, and this is probably the best one, or the most memorable anyway. I just, uh, just loved it. So, a lot of great stuff. And there's a... So a lot of stuff by other artists involved as well, particularly a guy called Joseph Hoffman, who's an architect and designer. There's a lot of his stuff there. For example, there we go. Stuff like that. It's quite interesting, but the, the Klimt stuff is always good. I just love, love the style and uh, his use of colour and the use of the gold. Uh, we're having to find some typical um, Klimt work here. Yeah, the, this kind of stuff. It's really, really nice. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Well, look at that, it's just fantastic. If you remember my, um, one of my, uh, which one was it, the first uh, record, what was it called? Oh gosh, uh, Deep Cut Albums, and, um, oh, was it the first one? Yeah, um, I showed my, uh, the Susie and the Banshees, um, Kissing in the Dreamhouse uh, album, and um, that was very much inspired by Klimt, the album sleeve for that. But uh, yeah, so there you go, that was just really, really good, and like I say, this is definitely still available, this catalogue, and... Um, of course, lots of Klimt art around the world, particularly in Vienna. But uh, uh, when uh, when uh, COVID finishes and all the galleries are open again, it's going to be great. Everyone's going to be get, getting back out there, getting out to the gigs, getting out to the galleries, just uh, getting back to normal again. So uh, number four in my uh, art exhibition top ten here, Gustav Klimt at Tate Liverpool 2008. Okay, top three. Uh, Picasso. I've been to many Picasso exhibitions all over the place. I've been to two two of his um, museums, the Picasso museums in uh, I forgot where they are now. Uh, Barcelona, <laughs> Barcelona and Paris. The Paris one is superb. It's been recently, or fairly recently, refurbished and expanded. That's absolutely brilliant. But um, out of all the ones I've been to, <coughs> the best by far was the. A uh, recent one, actually, 2018. It was in London, uh, Tate Modern, and it was called Picasso 1932. Absolutely superb. Now, 1932 was a quite an important year for Picasso. He, was, he called it his year of wonders, where he just really went berserk and just did loads and loads of paintings. And this kind of follows that. Uh, you have, basically, a day-to-day -day diary of what he was up to. This was like, well, for example, Monday the 21st of November... Did those? Oh, sorry, that was Monday on that side. And the other side is Tuesday, <laughs> the twenty second of November, and there's Friday, October, October the seventh on that side there. But it was just, it was just incredible. There's so much stuff there. I mean, it, it was famously prolific anyway. But um, it just did so much in this one year. It was just uh, out of this world, really. Let me just find some of the more famous, famous stuff in here. 
uh, it was just really, really great. I just, I just spent a long time walking around. I went with a friend um, who raced around, and I was like saying, "Oh no, you've got to, got to take your time. You know, you pay your money, take your time." Um, that was one of the uh, the uh, better known art uh, work uh, works of art there. You have the uh, Nudra necklace, of course, there on that side. There's all this, uh, all this pretty cool stuff. Where's that? Oh no, I was gonna. Lots of reclining nudes and things. Where are we? But uh, there's one thing I, I need to show you here. It was quite funny because uh, he had this. Um, it was basically his first large scale retrospective, which was um, in June 1932. And that was what is what this uh, exhibition is celebrating, really. That was kind of like in the middle of the year. And it, where was it? It was a uh, gallery, Georges George Petit, I think it was called. And uh, there's some photographs of the actual. <laughs> the actual uh, retrospective here, and then I'm just intrigued by the way that the um, the paintings are just displayed there. It's not that very haphazardly just thrown all over the walls. Some of them are just so high up you won't be able to see them properly. And I thought, well, this is one of the world's greatest painters hasn't been taught how to display his art properly. Because <laughs> um, one of the ways, uh, one of the things I was taught at art school was um, to display the things properly. We were actually, we were actually given different sized blank pieces of card and told to put them on this wall and to, to, to display them properly, usually all at um, eye level, or average eye level. But I thought that, that, was, that was quite fascinating, but uh, I suppose that's Picasso, we can get away with things like that. There's a, another reclining nude. Lots of reclining nudes in this, in this show. But yeah, it was just um, that was absolutely brilliant, I just love the, the walking around. A nude, nude green leaves and busts. There we go. Um, this one I haven't checked whether it's still available or not, but um, it was a, yeah, it's just an interesting, it's just interesting uh, insight to a year in the life of uh, Pablo Picasso and the way he works and the sketches. There's, there's obviously hundreds of sketches of him he was doing, all kinds of things, the notes he was making, just uh, phenomenal. Oh, this was uh, January 1930. Oh, yes, it was, a, it was follow the following year. He carried on painting the following year, of course. That was, that was probably that was the first painting he did in, the, in 1933. So. Anyway, there we go. So that's from 2018, Tate Modern in London, Picasso 1932. Really good, number three in my uh, top ten here. And number two, we're going all the way back to Australia. Um, my favourite art gallery in Australia is the, um, what's it called, uh, the National Gallery of Victoria, which is in Melbourne, which is an amazing building, it's massive, and I've been to quite a few exhibitions there. This one is the most recent one on this list, it's also the heaviest catalogue, because they only just published the catalogue in a hardback edition, and it's one of my favourite artists, it's MC Escher, and it is called, the exhibition was called Between Two Worlds. Now, because of that, um, it's called that because it was also doubled with um, a design studio called Nendo, Escher and Nendo. And now, Nendo is a Japanese design studio um, founded by a guy called uh, ok uh, Okisato, I think it's called. And um, they do, um, sort of like, in in they sort of like mess around with uh, designs, geometry and space and things, lots of designs and interior designs and... No, I'll just show you some of the stuff. Um, Escher, just one of my absolute favourite artists, and they had so much of his stuff there. It was just, it was just unreal. It was like a, it was a very, a very long gig <laughs> that one. He, he played all his hits. I mean, I've been to, um, I've seen a lot of Escher before. I've been to um, Escher exhibitions in the UK, and um, particularly one back in the eighties when uh, we did a. Um, did a big project on Escher at the college, at art college, and uh, it coincided with an exhibition in Liverpool at the Walker Gallery, which was absolutely fantastic. But uh, this was just absolutely full of um, a lot of his stuff. You know, when he was messing with perspective and messing with infinity and reflections, and uh, just the, the, graf the graphics of it. You know, to me, as a graphic designer, I'm just really intrigued by it all. It's just it's so so complex and. Uh, and yet so effective, you know, so kind of so, just made everything so, look so easy. There's the uh, relativity, that's one of his more famous um, etchings there, with the uh, impossible kind of dimensions going on. Uh, I'm trying to find, the, the, of course, it, lots of his famous stuff was there. If you saw my, one of my art 
album sleeve. Oh, this, this is the um, this is the Nando kind of stuff. So that three D kind of things, like just um, messing with perspective and distance. Uh, it's all kind of you know, things like that. And it can kind of fit together really well. You can see where they're both coming from, because you have um, Escher from the the old school and Nendo as a current current um, design group. But it was just a, an absolutely amazing thing to walk around. I spent a lot of time there. It was in the middle of a very very hot summer in Melbourne, and um, luckily the uh, the gallery is very well air conditioned. And uh, this was just a little great great souvenir. Um, I'm assuming it's still available. It was quite expensive, so probably, probably it's still still available there, uh, particularly in the in the gallery itself. And it's quite a recent one, it was 2019. But um, yeah, absolutely brilliant. That's uh, M. C. Escher, number two in my top ten art exhibitions from uh, National Gallery of Victoria in Melbourne, from 2019. And number one. If anyone ever says to me, well, "Who's your favourite artist?" I would say, "I would say this guy." But to be honest, I don't really have a favourite artist as, as such, because um, there's, there's so many different. It's like with music; it's difficult to say so many different styles, so many different genres. It's the same with art. But um, if it if it did have to definitely say someone, it would have to be Edvard Munch. And this was his exhibition that I went to in 1992, uh, National Gallery in London, called "The Freeze of Life." Absolutely brilliant. Now um, we studied uh, Monk as part of uh, art history at college but we never, I don't remember uh, as ever actually going to see an exhibition of his. Uh, I'd seen some of his work in some of the galleries but this was the first um, big exhibition I'd seen of, uh, with, 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 a, with a lot of his work in to be honest. It was just absolutely, absolutely brilliant and he did, he did, he did have his greatest hits uh, his, uh, his best known painting The Scream on the front there of which there are four versions. There are two painted and two with pastel. Uh, the one that was there was the one on loan from uh, the National Gallery of Oslo, which was um, the first painted one, which I think, oh, damn, when was the date? Uh, 1893, I think he painted that. And he did quite a lot of his, his paintings, there were various versions of them, but this was just absolutely brilliant. I mean, he, there's one there called Vampire, of course. It's vampires, two, two versions of it. Uh, he deals a lot with uh, moods and emotions, like this one here, The Sick Child. There's two, two different versions of The Sick Child. And uh, they were all there. They, the screen, they only had the one version, but quite a lot they had multiple versions. Um, you know, the, um, by the Deathbed, Fever. Two different um, interpretations of that. But he's a fascinating um, artist and a uh, fascinating person in um, many ways. I just love his style, I just love his use of colour. And he, uh, he, he this, his art is just so full of emotion. I mean, um, just incredible. I mean, and seeing, seeing the, standing in front of some of these paintings was just amazing. You know, it was like seeing your favourite band standing in front of you play, playing their best songs. But, uh, oh, there's another, there's a, this wasn't at a lithograph, there's a lithograph on the screen there. I think that, that may have been there, I'm not quite sure. And then anxiety. That's another one. He's in with that blood red sky again, like um, quite a few of his paintings. But uh, yeah, it was just absolutely brilliant. I think it was a picture of the chap in here somewhere. Oh, there is a self portrait. It's pretty good. There he is, the man himself. So there we go. Norway's finest, Edvard Munch, Freeze of Life, my um, number one art exhibition from 1992 at the uh, National Gallery in um, London. So. There we go. So that was a bit different, bit of art, bit of culture, and uh, yeah, one of my um, one of my passions, art, art. I mean, music is art in a way, isn't it? So, well, it is art. No two ways about it. Uh, they go. They've gone hand in hand through my life, and they're going to carry on. So there we go. So that's my hundredth video. Uh, thank you for being there. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found it interesting, and I hope you maybe go and check out some of those catalogues if, they, if you can find them to buy anywhere so um, uh, my 101st video will be coming next wow I can do the maths ok that's me done for now I'll um, catch you next time thank you for being there bye for now